This video was brought to you by Technically Not a Technician. In today's video I'll show you how I use Kodi on a Raspberry Pi to stream my TV antenna and my TV cable to my televisions so I don't have to pay extra for cable boxes. I'm also going to change out the case so it looks appealing as a cable box and we will do a short demo at the end of the video. For today's video I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 3B, a 16GB SD card, and a Generation 1 Argon Pi case. All of these items I have left over from old projects, and I wish to reuse them. I love the idea of reusing, and not wasting old hardware, and if reusing these items can also help me shave the cable cord a little, then why not put the hardware to good use. Because I'm using old hardware, the first thing I need to do, is disassemble all of the old parts. As you can see, my Pi 3B is currently in a case. However, the Argon case is more streamlined and appealing to the eye. Because the Argon case has a low profile and looks great, and because this is going to be in front of my TV, we will be using the Argon. I also like that the Argon case still lets me access the GPIO pins. They even label them for you. That really makes it easy to work with, and the Argon case has a nice shutdown button. The script to install the shutdown button is very easy to use and adds some much needed function to your Pi experience. Basically, this case acts as a heat sink for your Pi's CPU. The Argon also has a small daughter card that connects your audio port, an HDMI port to the case, and a connection for your GPIO pins that will use and or extend your Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins outside of the case. Here, we see the daughter board that extends your audio and HDMI ports to the back of the Argon's case. They've really made great use of the space and overall size of the case. I'll clean my workspace a little, and we will now remove the Raspberry Pi 3B from the case it is currently in. The case that our Pi is currently in is a great case, however it does lack a shutdown button, and it looks like something you would find in a warehouse, not in a living room. I'm also going to need to clean the thermal adhesive off of both the case and the Pi. To clean the thermal adhesive we will be using a simple paper towel and some 91 proof isopropyl alcohol. Now that we have all of our thermal adhesive cleaned off, we can start putting our Raspberry Pi into our case. We will start by connecting our Raspberry Pi 3 and the audio video daughter board together. We will also be connecting the Raspberry Pi GPIO pins to the Argon's GPIO connector, giving the case access to the GPIO pins and extending those pins to the outside of the case. We will need to add thermal adhesive to the heat transfer point on the case. Again the case acts as a large heat sink for our Pi's CPU.
Using the case as a heat sink has some great advantages if you wish to overclock your Pi. Because this Raspberry Pi is only going to serve as a cable box. I will not be overclocking it today. We will now align our GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi with the GPIO pin connector on the Argon case. When doing this, make sure to align everything right and be cautious and mindful not to bend any of the GPIO pins. We now have all of our parts installed with a loose fit and we'll now screw all of our hardware down so we can move on to the software. Our Raspberry Pi is now inside a great looking Argon case with a shutdown button. Let's get out our SD card and SD card reader and let's start on installing the Libralec OS with Kodi as a front end. The SD card was also used on another project. I always like formatting my card before I place a new image on it. I know this is really just an extra step. However, if there is an issue with the card, formatting it before I put a new image on the card should let me know. I use SD Formatter, it's simple to use, and I'll link to it in the description if you would like to give it a try. I will also link to the image download page. I'll be downloading the Raspberry Pi 3 image, as that's the one I need. However, they have images that will work on the Pi 2, Pi 3, and the Pi 4. The download can differ depending on your internet connection and the amount of people downloading it. I've sped our download up to help us save some time. Now that we have our image downloaded we'll need to extract the file, as it has been compressed with a zip utility. I'll be using a zip utility called 7-zip. 7-zip is a free tool, it works great, and is very powerful. I'll also link to its download in my description. When I burn any image on an SD card I always use Win32 Disk Imager. I've used the program for years now. Again, this is a free utility, as free as always in my price range. It's also very powerful and easy to use. I'll make sure I have a link in the description for you. Placing the image on your SD card will take different times depending on the speed of your computer. I'll speed this up so we don't have to wait. Our SD card now has our OS installed, and it will boot into Kodi giving us a great platform for streaming cable and terrestrial TV signals via our back-end HD home run units. Let's get our SD card inserted into our Argon case with our Raspberry Pi installed. Now all we need to do is boot up this cable box for the first time and set it up. The first time we boot up Libra Elec it will need to resize your SD card so that it can use all the space available to the card. The unit will also reboot itself, this is normal and to be expected. We are now fully booted up. However we have a few settings we need to change before we can watch TV. The first thing Cody will ask us is to set up the Wi-Fi. 
I'm connected via the Ethernet, so I will not set this up. However you will need to be connected to the network for this to work, but it doesn't matter if you are connected via the Wi-Fi or a hard connection. We'll need to navigate to the settings and find the add-on section. We'll then select install from repository and then select the all repository option. Once here we will need to find the PVR section to find our PVR software. Once in the PVR section, we need to find the PVR that corresponds to HD Home Run and download and install it. It will not take long for it to install. Once installed it will need to sync itself with the HD home run units and get all of the channel information. Cody now has access to my cable signal and the terrestrial television signal I pull in from my antenna. This dream, it wasn't about Molly, it was about Kelly. Somebody is trying to hurt her. I'm not sure how much of the audio I can use without YouTube hitting me, so I will be pulling most of it out. However, it sounds great and gives me no issues at all. I also like to set it up so that Cody is using the same channel numbers as my cable provider, and I also like to make sure that the built-in guide stays up to date. To do this, I do the following two things. First, we'll go back to the settings, and under the PVR management, we'll change our setting mode to expert, and then select guide. Here we will disable prevent updates during playback. The last thing we will do is go to the general tab and tell Cody to use the channel order and the channel numbers from the back end. I will also clear all the data so the unit can do a soft reset of the PVR. In short Cody does a nice job of acting as a front end for cable and antenna TV. This system works well for me and helps me save a little on the cable bill. Please enjoy the rest of the demo and let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. Tell me what you know. Hi, Mama Lorraine. This is Sergeant Lee, 6th Precinct. Yeah. For powering mills since the advent of the water wheel in the mid 18th century. Uh, 
al minuto 41, Corey Bird, el 1 por 0 para el equipo de Houston. Llegaría el de la igualada, lo hizo Johnny Russell al 52. Atención con esta jugada porque una cadena de eventos desafortunados terminaría en esta nota. I hope you enjoyed and found the video informative. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe.